All right, so we're back on the bench here, and we're going to remove the capacitors from this Luxman RV-371 surround processor board. We're going to remove all the uh, bad electrolytic uh, capacitor, uh, aluminum capacitor components off of this board. I'm going to put it under the microscope. And what we're going to be using is uh, a pair of Hacko 950 tweezers. And this is going to be kind of, the temperature that these tweezers are at are actually a little bit warmer than I like, but since I'm not using the capacitors again, um, it doesn't matter. They kind of, uh, once you actually heat the part, they get kind of destructive on the component itself. Uh, they, they melt the plastic base that's underneath the capacitor. so. Uh, it's kind of a one and done kind of deal. So we're going to just uh, pick a capacitor here and go with it. All right, I'll start here. Now there's a couple different things you can do. You can try and put some flux on the part. We'll see if we need it or not. Well, there we go. That's one. Now I've seen some pretty brute force methods of uh, taking these caps off, which is some I've seen people cut them and try and take the base off afterwards. I've seen people grab them with pliers and twist them off. Uh, there's some real crazy methods out there. I, I don't like doing those methods at all because it tends to uh, really possibly compromise the pad underneath. Uh, this is a pretty sure method that you're not going to damage the pad underneath. So, it's going to sit there and wait for it to heat up. And, uh, come on. There we go. Ooh, it just popped. <laughs> it didn't like the heat. All right. That would come off easy. Let's go for this one. As far as I can tell, this is the most, this is the easiest way to do it without damaging anything. pretty cool I can actually do it two ways I can do it one by using the microscope or one by using the screen because it's such low latency in the display it's actually like watching uh, real time what you're doing so that's pretty cool now this one here has a little bit of some damage nearby so I'm gonna be very careful not to melt that connector oh, that came right off Let's go for, and of course I've already took many pictures of this board so I know what values to put back in what, which places so if you're wondering how I'm keeping track of that I've already took some digital stills of the board itself. The larger caps seem to need a little bit more heat. 
And this one's a little bit corroded, so this one might be a not so pleasant to try and get off. Okay, well, wasn't as bad. Well, it's not done yet either. There we go. All right, what do we got? See, with these hot tweezers, you can pretty much fly along. Um, you can use the other methods that are uh, available, but they're kind of destructive and very risky. At least I know for sure when I pull these caps off, there's going to be a trace underneath to work with. Let's clean these off. I do a little bit of a wiggle, kind of gets the the uh, iron to get the flow of the solder a little bit better. You let it just sit there. Sometimes it just doesn't make a good connection, so you kind of just wiggle it back and forth a little bit to just kind of stimulate the uh, the melting process. I've probably already taken off about, let's say, 12 caps or so. So, I mean, this is this is fast. I mean, it's not as fast as cutting them or, you know, uh, potentially killing your board, but you know, it's still fast enough. Alright, so we've done maybe about 20 or so caps here, and um, as you can see, you know, the pads still look in good shape. They're obviously dirty as hell. They got some plastic melting in there, and so what I gotta do is the first thing I was gonna go um, clean up a little bit of alcohol and then uh, use some soda wick. And um, yeah, get them nice and clean and back down to the pad, and then they'll be ready for fresh components. So we'll, uh, we'll see what we're going to do next. All right, we're going to start cleaning up some of these pad sites now. We're just going to take some flux and see if we can get this oriented correctly. And just put a little flux on these pads. It's going to make things flow a little bit better. And we want to put some new solder on them. This will uh, kind of get up that old crap solder, lead free crap. So. so 
and also make it easier to wick off. Those are my clippers. Alright, so now we got nice fresh flux. Let's wick these pads off. So those are nice new pad sites. All right, so I've cleaned up the board here, all the pads, everything's been cleaned off. I wicked all the solder off the pads and I also gave it a bath. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, but uh, what I do is I have a bin, a small flat bin that I put uh, you know, some alcohol in there and I just put the board in and I let it sit and every once in a while I'll just go by and agitate it a bit. Let it sit in there and soak for a while. And then when I take it out, um, just let it dry off and it comes out looking pretty good uh, so let's see what we have for damage to repair now um, I think there was a few corroded pads that we might have to work with and and uh, see what we can do with them oh yeah it already looks better under the microscope much better yeah there's a pad right there that needs to be dealt with it was definitely heavily corroded. As you can see, the point where uh, it corroded off is that through hole point there. And that goes down to the power supply rails, like I was saying, for all these devices. So, there's something common about that rail that gets corroded. So, that pad just came out of its place. So, we'll have to fix that up and we'll uh, get that functioning again let's see what else uh, yep we have to put our regulator in some caps and everything else looks pretty much the same just have to rig up a few jumpers yeah we'll stop putting caps on the board all right.